Well, good day everybody. This is Chris back again at the Ancient Scholar. And what I want to do today is just to take you through a introduction to some of the venomous snakes that we run into here in, uh, in North America, specifically in the United States. And uh, so I made a little PowerPoint and some pictures and these are pretty much stock photographs that I pulled off of Wikipedia. And that is just uh, due to copyright issues. These are either uh, Creative Commons uh, or uncopyrighted material. Uh, so what I did is I used those particular pictures just uh, because it's a lot safer. And then I have a link to the source of each photo, even uh, photographs that uh, do not have a, a copyright license on them. I just went ahead and just at, decided to put a link to each photograph. Um, and that just kind of covers me. So uh, these these particular photographs are going to be pretty easy to find if you just do a Google search or go to Wikipedia and look these snakes up. Um, and again, that's just to kind of uh, that's just to be safe, and that just helps me out with the copyright stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here, and uh, we'll run through. We'll take a look at some of these snakes. Okay, so this is an introduction to venomous snakes in uh, North America. Okay, just to review, remember we have the crotalids and the elapids. Um, <clears throat> the crotalids include the pit vipers. Um, and the pit vipers kind of have a triangular head. They have a large set of uh, retractable uh, fangs. And in general, their venom tends to be uh, more proteolytic, hemotoxic uh, types of venom, uh, with a few exceptions. Um, there are a few notable exceptions such as the Mojave uh, rattlesnake and the uh, Southern Pacific rattlesnake uh, that, have, uh, that can have more neurotoxic venom or more combination. And the timber rattlesnake as well um, can have uh, both neurotoxic and uh, proteolytic venom. And then we have the elapids, which are more cobra. Uh, the cobras and the crates and some of the more exotic snakes belong in that family, but the, the, the major uh, toxic or venomous elapid in North America is going to be the coral snake. And I'll show you guys an example of that. Okay, so here we go with uh, the prairie. This is the prairie rattlesnake. This is a pretty ubiquitous throughout the uh, western, at least the western um, United States, all the way from Montana, all the way up there from Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, all the way down into uh, Texas, Arizona, New Mexico. Very broad uh, swath of the country, the United States, has the uh, prairie rattlesnakes. Um, so I just went ahead and, went ahead and included a picture of, of this guy here. All right, that's the Crotalus viridius. And there, of course, is a link uh, for the photograph. All right, uh, the next one is the copperhead. Okay, and you can see the crop, copperhead is kind of a sub uh, sub uh, category. Um, so it's an Agistrodon uh, contorix. Uh, so it is not, it is still within the, the, the greater uh, Crotalidae um, uh, classification, but it's kind of a subclass. And of course, the uh, copperhead uh, rattlesnake, you can tell it kind of has a distinct coppery. <laughs> color on its head, and uh, that is what is a defining characteristic of this particular uh, snake. And you can see that its pattern is kind of these dark brown coppery tones, and there aren't any, any characteristic uh, like diamond shapes or anything like that. And this is a good picture <clears throat> because you can see uh, the snake's uh, pupil here, and you can see that it has that, that characteristic crotalid um, pupil to it. Um, and you can see that it has the pit for sensing heat and, of course, its nostril there. So this is a really good uh, close-up picture of uh, just a pit viper in general, but this specific one is the copperhead. All right, here's a picture of the uh, sidewinder snake. And the sidewinder snake, I, I think, is just a really cool-looking snake. It has this lighter tan color, really good in the sand. And you can see that it has these, these horns, these characteristic horns or ridges above its eyes there. Um, and so that makes it real easy to um, identify. And then, of course, it moves in kind of a, a side-winding type of fashion, hence the, the term um, sidewinder, uh, the uh, crotalus serastis. Uh, um, and uh, from what I've uh, read, the, the venom of this particular snake is not 
the most toxic of venom. Um, it's not the most highly toxic venom, and um, it, it's not one of the heavy hitters uh, for sure, but still uh, can be quite problematic if you get bit and venom envenomated with this particular snake. But it's really characteristic and, and really kind of easy to identify due to those, those ridges there. Okay, we have the um, water moccasin, and, and the water moccasin to me kind of looks more like a copperhead, except the head has a, a darker color in this particular picture here. And uh, the, the uh, another name or a common name for a water moccasin is a cotton mouth, and uh, that's the, the characteristic. And uh, this guy doesn't have his mouth open, but um, if he did, you would just be an all white mouth, hence the term um, cotton mouth. Uh, these are semi-aquatic snakes. They're really good at swimming in water. Uh, so you see these particular snakes in a very uh, warm, or temperate, uh, wet environment. So you would find these guys down south in, say, a state like Florida. Um, parts of Florida would have water moccasins or cotton mouths. And again, these kind of are in this little sub-class, uh, the... Uh, Agistrodon, ag Agistrodon um, uh, class, e even though they still are in the greater uh, class of, of crotalids. All right, I wanted to include these. These are very, very common snakes, wide range. Um, and these are the diamondback rattlesnakes. And we have two, two different flavors of, 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 of diamondback rattlesnakes, quote unquote. We have um, the western and eastern diamondback and um, the western diamondback you can see an example of that on the left and then the eastern diamondback you can see example on the right and these are these particular snakes are very common and they have this very classic or characteristic diamond like pattern um, on their on their dorsal on their dorsal surface there and you can see both of them do um, the Western Diamondback is a little more tan and perhaps a little more lighter colored, whereas you see these are darker colors here on the uh, Eastern Diamondback. Um, we see the Western Diamondbacks, of course, more in the western part of the United States, the southwest particularly, and then the Eastern Diamondbacks tend to be more eastern um, in the United States. Okay, and here is the uh, Southern Pacific Rattlesnake. Uh, this guy here, of course, is um, highly venomous. Uh, there's been some deaths uh, associated uh, with envenomations due to this snake, and of course, this is one of the of the three that can have a uh, Mojave toxin or Mojave-like uh, toxins in its uh, venom, and can be, uh, in addition to proteo proteolytic and hemotoxic effects, it can have. Uh, the neurological or neurotoxic effects. So the Southern Pacific rattlesnake in the United States uh, tends to be very specific uh, to the southwestern uh, part of the United States, in particular in the uh, southern part of uh, California. Um, <clears throat> hence the, the term Southern Pacific rattlesnake. All right, and this is the Mojave rattlesnake. Of course, this is one of the other one of the three big baddies when it comes to the pit vipers. And the Mojave rattlesnake, I think, uh, can at least you know my uneducated non-herpetologist mind, this might be very easy to to misconstrue with a diamondback because it does have this this pattern here. It is not really diamond-like, but you know, at first glance, you could convince yourself that it is but but one thing that I've, I've noticed about these snakes is what happens is you can see that the, they have this kind of this darker color and then what happens is the color fades toward the end of the snake here and you can see that it just really fades out and be in the color becomes much less pronounced here and even sometimes toward the tail it can get a little greenish and I, I've heard people say that the, the green Mojave um, rattlesnake as well but this is a very classic indication that you're dealing with a Mojave rattlesnake. These um, these colors kind of fading out as you transition into the distal part of the, the snake and, and the rattle. So that's kind of a, a classic uh, finding associated with Mojave rattlesnake. All right, and then we have the timber rattlesnake here. Um, really cool looking picture here. Uh, 
kind of has these darker colors. Uh, we tend to find these in more forested areas. Um, not so much in the northern. These tend to be more southern United States. So, you know, like Georgia, for example, in the forested areas of Georgia, uh, you might see uh, run into these guys here. And you can really see the, the pit there, good, good shot of the uh, elliptical, elliptical pupil in the, in the nostrils there. Really, you can see that kind of that arrow, arrow shaped head that um, all the, the crotalids uh, tend to share. All right, and then I just wanted to include this. This is an example of a coral snake. Uh, this, is, this happens to be the Easter, an eastern coral snake, so we'd see this more in the eastern United States whereas you could have other types of coral snakes that you might find in other places such as Texas and you can see that classic um, red touching yellow bands here and of course there's that old saying if red touches yellow this snake might kill a fellow and then if red touches black venom lack um, I don't know how confident I would be in that um, in general because I don't really go out and uh, handle snakes per se but it is kind of a a good saying that uh, does tend to be generally correct when dealing with coral snakes in uh, North America, specifically United States. Uh, so this is not a, a crotalid. This is actually an elapid here. So this this guy, and you can see that his head is does not have that diamond shape. It's kind of a, a has a kind of a more smoother kind of a smoother shape to it. Okay, so that kind of concludes an introduction to the venomous snakes that we find in North America. Um, in the next video, I actually have some pictures that I'm going to show you that I actually drew to show you the range or some, some more of the specific areas of the United States where we see these specific snakes. I mentioned um, their range somewhat in this particular video, but I want to do another video that focuses on, okay, this is an area where you find this snake versus other snakes. Um, and you can see that there are a lot of a lot of places where you have cohabitation. You have different, multiple different species of snakes um, sharing the same area, and in particular, uh, California, Arizona, uh, kind of that particular area of the United States, the 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 Southwest area there, uh, tends to have a lot of different types of rattlesnakes. So particularly, kind of the southern part of California there. Um, they actually have, you know, highly specialized uh, emergency rooms. I believe Loma Linda uh, University has an emergency room that's, that's really good at dealing with snake bites uh, simply because there are so many damn snakes uh, that you run into in that particular area of the United States. Okay, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and as always, thanks for hanging in there.